I have a question for you. What's the secret to achieving a goal? Now here's the answer. Identifying that goal in the first place. And that's true for every aspect of life, including retirement. I'm Wes Wood, the Income Guy and founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And for nearly 20 years, I specialize in helping hardworking Tennesseans just like you reach their retirement goals through income-based financial strategies. So if you're looking for the right solutions to achieve your own financial goals, I can help. Just reach out to me at retiretv.com or by calling 615-826-5749 during today's show or at any time. So successful retirement planning starts with goal setting. I know I've said it often, I sound like a broken record, but it's a message that is so important and it's true. So instead of just repeating it again today, I'm going to actually teach you how to set and achieve your retirement goals. I'm going to cover the how and the when to start your goal setting process, the important questions to consider, and for most people, how the key to achieving your goals lies in one word, income. And joining us on today's show is David Scranton. Dave is an investing for income specialist with over 30 years of retire of experience, and he's also a best-selling author and a television host. But before we welcome Dave, let's talk more about the how and the when to start setting your retirement goals. As far as when to start, if you're over 55 years old, you need to start now or as soon as possible. And a good first step is to nail down when you plan on retiring. The answer for everyone will be different. But some people mistakenly think that they have less choice in the matter than they really actually do. And as you probably already know, for most people, they think 65 is the reasonable retirement age because that's when Medicare kicks in. And since you're over 62 years old, you can start collecting on your Social Security at any time. But still, planning on retiring at 65, long after it or not at all, could be the case for many, many folks. But whatever it is, the answer to that question on when to retire will put you in a better position to identify your specific goals. And if you haven't given it much thought yet, here are four questions that can help you. The first one, do you plan on moving? If so, where to? And if you're considering several places, try to narrow it down. Number two, what mainly would you like to do? This means visualizing your day-to-day -day life in retirement. What will make you happy and fulfilled? Fishing every day, eating out every night, those types of things. Uh, three, do you have goals that include traveling? And if so, where, where are you gonna travel to and when are you gonna go? And finally, ask yourself if you think you'll want to make a major purchase when you retire. Maybe you want to buy a vacation home or perhaps a dream car. And if so, include it as a goal when you write them all down. Now, congratulate yourself because guess what? You now have specific goals, which means you can start working on a plan design that's to achieve all of those goals. And more about that in just a moment. But you can also learn more right now by reading my timely report, The Fundamentals of Retirement Income. It's a part of your, your free retirement income kit, and you can get one by visiting retiretv.com or by calling 615-826-5749. But now, let's welcome David Scranton. David is the founder of Sound Income Strategies and the Retirement Income Store. Dave, thanks for joining me again today. Oh, great to be here. I can see you, uh, you still haven't gotten that haircut you promised, huh? Gee whiz, I'm waiting, another week <laughs> no. goes by. I had and uh, time flies and uh, forgot to get in there again. I, I promise I'll get you one soon. Don't worry about it. I'll let you know. All right. Sounds good. You know, yeah. when you talk about goal setting, I find for a lot of people, setting retirement goals is like this daunting task. And that's part of the reason they just, they just never, never really get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what happens a lot of times. I'm afraid that people um, really just don't take the time to set goals. Maybe there's a, a little bit of a, of a laziness there, but also sometimes people are just afraid to set goals because perhaps if they set goals, they, they may look at their investments or realize that they may not have enough money to be able to achieve those goals, which is quite frankly, um, uh, a lot of cases just 
just not even the case at all. So if people were to just take the time to actually set their goals, I, I don't think that they would be you know, that overwhelmed or that daunted by that process. Well, not only is that a self-defeating attitude, but it's also illogical if you think about it, right? Right, right. It's, it's kind of like the little guy from the Dr. Seuss book, Green Eggs and Ham, right? He said he's not going to eat them. He, he knows he's not going to like them, but uh, we know once he did how that, that story ended. That's right. That's right. And so let me switch gears if I can for a minute here. You know, I'm hearing more and more people today say, I don't want to retire. I want to keep working. And I'm not talking about the ones who are saying it because they have to work because they haven't saved anything. I'm talking about the ones who really feel like, hey, I really want to continue working as long as I can. I love what I'm doing. But it doesn't mean that they can avoid planning altogether either, correct? Yeah, that, that's right. Just because uh, we talk a lot about retirement on this show, it doesn't mean that you need to be retired to really have to focus in on your investments. Because you know, we, we work with a lot of folks that are in their 70s and 80s and still just enjoy having a job and working. But we need to also make sure that the investments are in line with what their current goals are even though they're working. Because we do have some other factors to, to consider. Um, like inflation and, and rising health care costs. Those are things that we're going to hit head on eventually whether you're working or not. Or RMDs or even what's the right way to take Social Security and aligning that with our own financial strategies. So just because your plan is to continue working through your so-called retirement years, uh, we still need to make sure we have a plan for that investments as well. And you never know if you're going to be able to, right? I mean, you could have health issues that preclude you from working. You have another crisis like COVID-19 where you get laid off. So, so there's lots of factors why you need to be ready just in case your plan A doesn't work out the way you expected. And yeah, exactly it's, right. It's more important too when two spouses are creating goals, right? To make sure to get as close to on the same page as you can because sometimes their goals aren't the same, right? Yeah, I mean, we all know that, uh, you know, folks that uh, I'm married, you're married, we know that, hey, our, my, my goals are going to be a lot different than my wife's, Susanna's goals. But we obviously need to, to work together to create our own retirement goals because obviously we're going to be living many, many years together well into retirement, just like so many folks that are retired. So we just can't look at, hey, my goals, we got to look at our household goals and really what we want to do. But uh, yeah, Dave, and, and great question, and, and thanks for, thanks for um, uh, sticking around. And, and after the break, I want to talk to you a little bit more. I'm going to share with you three more important questions to help you set and achieve your financial retirement goals. I'm Westwood, the Income Guy, and you're watching the Retirement Income Show. Hi, I'm Wes Wood, founder of Wood Financial Group. Did you know that one simple mistake can derail your retirement plan? Could you be making that mistake right now? By not making the shift from growth-based to income-based investing, you could be setting up your retirement plan to fail. If you're at or near retirement age, time is not on your side. One market correction could wipe out your life savings. Make the switch today so you can preserve your assets and generate retirement income you can count on. Visit RetireTV.com to download your free retirement income kit from Wood Financial Group. Welcome back. I'm Wes Wood, The Income Guy, and thank you for joining me today as I talk about the how to set you, your goals and how to achieve your retirement goals. And so far, we've covered how to and when to get started. Now, let's talk about putting your goals into action. Once you've identified your goals, it's time to start sketching out your plan. And you can do that by asking yourself three more questions. One question, where am I now? And the answer should encompass several things. How much have I saved so far? How long until I, I hit my target retirement date? How secure is my job and how much debt do I have? And all those things should be uh, very important to consider. And question number two, what's my time frame? This means establishing a rough timeline for achieving all or some of your goals. 
if, if you're going to move, when are you going to move and where are you going to go? If you're going to travel, when will you take your first trip? And question number three, are my goals realistic? You don't need to start crunching numbers yet to try to answer this one. But generally, you should have a better sense now that you've determined your starting point and your time frame. You may need to adjust a few things, but, but that's fine because you need to continue doing that as you revisit your goals in the coming years. And that's part of your process as well. Another good way is to start this process is by downloading your free retirement income kit by visiting retiretv.com or calling my office directly at 615-826-5749. But now, let's welcome back income specialist, David Scran. Welcome back, David. So it's interesting because the first step, like you say, is to, to say, where am I now? But when we talk about where you are now financially, you're not talking just about where you are in terms of how much you have on your balance sheet. There are other factors as well, correct? Uh, absolutely. So many people get caught up in the lump sum you know, how much money they have saved up as where are they now. But often forget about there's a many other factors that go into, you know, income-based or retirement strategies or, or, you know, where they are now as far as how much income they're going to have when they do retire or how much income they're going to collect from Social Security or um, there's more than just looking at the lump sum because looking at the lump sum can sometimes be self-defeating. And people get frustrated because they just don't think they have enough to retire. So there's a lot more that goes into, you know, just how much money they've got sitting in the bank accounts or within their 401ks and their IRAs. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you don't retire on your lump sum. You don't take withdrawals and hope you die before you've withdrawn all your money, right? You live off your income. So you always talk about making that shift when you're focusing on lump sum accumulation when you're younger. But at some point, making the shift to focusing on how much income the investments generate when is the best time to start to make that transition? Yeah, we, we call it the, the transitional phase of life, typically five to 10 years, really probably 10 years away from retirement. It's typically a good time to make the shift from, from growth to income and focus more on interest and dividends. And there's a lot of reasons that are gonna go around that, but a couple of main ones are, typically when you go from the G to the I, you're gonna take on less risk. And of course, if you're five, 10 years away from retirement, that's gonna be the right approach is to take some risk out of your portfolio because you may not have the time to rebound if you're all in growth. You just may not get to where you need to. But also, another reason why so many people go from the G to the I, five to 10 years away from retirement is because maybe they do have enough money in their portfolio to be invested for interest and dividends to generate the kind of cash flow or the income that they could live off of in their retirement. So now it's a better time to go ahead and solidify that to make sure that they'll be able to retire successfully with the mm -hmm. peace of mind that they know that they know that they're in good shape. That's right. So I'm about 10 years out and I look at the income from my investments, I look at social security and it's less than what I'm making today. But isn't it true that a lot of times when people start to look at expenses they might currently have that are gonna go away or reduce when they retire, they shouldn't get too discouraged about that if they find that to be true, that you know, their total income sources today or, or, or projected in retirement today are less than they currently have, correct? Oftentimes, you're, you're, you nailed it, oftentimes people um, actually need probably less income than they initially realized when they do retire. There's very, very few people that need to get back all the way up to where they're currently bringing in the exact same amount of income from their work. Uh, because once you once you kind of subtract out a lot of those expenses, you're not going to have them when you're retired. Um, you're probably going to see the need for income go down some because your expenses are lowering as well. For example, let's say uh, we work with a lot of people that their goal is to get their house paid off before they retire. Well, gosh, if your mortgage payment is a thousand dollars a month now, that's twelve thousand dollars a year. Uh, well, that's going to disappear off your your expense column, right? So there's less income needed. Uh, also, a lot of people are contributing quite a money into their 401ks and their IRAs. Well, obviously if somebody's retired, they're probably not gonna be doing that anymore. And so that's more of a, of a cash flow that's basically not showing up in their current income that they're used to having now. So there's gonna be a lot of factors. And uh, I love it when we, when we run 
um, the top-down budget analysis, which we've talked about in previous shows with, with our clients, and they get excited to realize that, hey, they're actually a lot further ahead than they thought they were. And a lot of people can get away with working without an advisor during their accumulation years, but when they get to these transition years, I think that's one of the reasons a lot of people do take on an advisor at that time. But how do you know? How do your viewers know if, if he or she, a particular viewer, needs an advisor or maybe is capable of doing it themselves all the way through? Yeah, and, and there's, there's probably no exact right answer to that question, but I will say, if somebody's in their accumulation phase of life, that's pretty straightforward. If, you know, I have a lot of uh, clients that ask me to speak with their children or their grandchildren, for instance. And I have a conversation with the grandchild or child and I'll tell them, hey, just keep doing what you're doing now. Keep maxing out your 401k and going to those growth strategies because you have years before uh, you really need, need to make the shift from growth to income. And really the right time to, to talk to those advisors is probably, again, during that transitional phase when you, when you really need to get a coordinated effort and make that shift. Uh, but Dave, yeah, great question and, and thanks again. And Dave, stick around. And coming up after the break, I'll talk more about how to identify the right financial strategy for achieving your financial goals. I'm Westwood, The Income Guy, and you're watching The Retirement Income Show. Hi, I'm Wesley Wood, host of The Retirement Income Show, and I'm founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And we're a local independent financial services company that specializes in creating custom retirement solutions tailored to meet your particular needs. Visit retiretv.com to learn how we can help you create a customized retirement portfolio. A fiduciary is someone legally obligated to act in your best interest. Doctors, lawyers, and some financial advisors are fiduciaries, but not all. When you work with Wes Wood and his team at Wood Financial Group, you are working with fiduciaries. They help clients create customized investment portfolios based off their retirement goals. If you're ready to work with a fiduciary, visit retiretv.com and schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes or a Wood Financial Group advisor. Hi, I'm Wes Wood, founder of Wood Financial Group. There are hundreds of different ways you can claim your Social Security benefits, but the difference between the best way versus the second best way could be the difference in tens of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. You don't want to miss out on an income stream that can help fund your retirement dreams. Go to RetireTV.com to claim your custom Social Security analysis from Wood Financial Group. We can help maximize your Social Security benefits in retirement. Hey, welcome back. I'm Wes Wood, The Income Guy, and thank you for tuning in. And today, we're looking at how to set and achieve your retirement goals. So far, we've talked about the how and the when to set your goals, an important question to consider, and why having the right strategy is ultimately more important than your lump sum savings. But what is the right strategy? And the answer to that question becomes clear after you've identified your goals. That's because you now know whether they're purpose-based or performance-based. And if you're like most people, the answer is your investments are purpose-based. And that means you're not investing for so-called maximum return. You're investing for a specific purpose, which is now spelled out in all of your goals. For most people, the purpose is similar. You may want to live comfortably at a nice place. Perhaps you want to travel when you're retired. You want to of course, enjoy your hobbies and, and visit your, your children and grandchildren and do all of those great things without having to worry about your money. And once you realize your goals are purpose-based, another thing becomes clear very quickly. These aren't the types of goals that you want to pay for by selling shares of your investments. They're the kind of goals you want to pay for from your regular income stream. In other words, they're also income-based. And for a lot of people, this is like a moment of clarity. Suddenly, they fully understand why investing directly for retirement income makes so much sense. Because remember, total return is the sum of growth and income. Investing for income simply shifts your strategic focus from the G to the I, from growth to income. 
It's a strategy that aligns your purpose-based goals, and it also better prepares you to meet all the financial challenges unique to your retirement. But before I welcome back Dave, here's one more chance to get your copy of my informative report, The Fundamentals of Retirement Income. And it comes with your free retirement income kit. And it's available by visiting retiretv.com or by calling 615-826-5749. But now, let's welcome back income specialist and the founder of the Retirement Income Store, David Scranton. Hello, Dave. You know, Wes, I love it. You used the phrase, I believe you said, moment of clarity. And that's kind of what it's like sometimes with people when the light bulb goes off and, and all of a sudden they realize they need to go from growth to income philosophically with their investments. I mean, do you find it to be like a, that snap of a finger, that light bulb going off too? I do. I, uh, yeah, it is a moment of clarity, an aha moment as we call it, where people say, oh, I really need to be looking at this in a different way. Um, because think about it. When you ask most people, what is the purpose of this money? Retirement dollars, I mean. Like IRAs, 401ks, those retirement dollars. If the purpose of the money is really to be there to supplement their income in retirement, supplement their Social Security, their pension checks, give them additional income to live off of, it's like, aha, it's clear to them that they should invest for the purpose of that money and invest for income. It's really that simple. Mm, right. Why am I investing for growth if I want income? Exactly. But let's say somebody does want to invest for growth. You know, some people think, well, gosh, if I invest for income, I can't have any growth. But that's not really true, is it? No, not at all. Very common misconception. People think that if you go from growth to income, you end up forfeiting or giving up returns. You can still get very good returns, good growth in investing for income. Uh, I mean, think about it. If you're generating interest and dividends, then you can just simply reinvest those interest and dividends. And with people with the, with the you know, okay risk tolerance, with higher risk tolerances, can invest into common stocks that are gonna be paying dividends that will give them dividends, but also potential for growth. So unfortunately, it is a misconception in perhaps the brokerage world and the media thinking that, hey, if I go from growth, I'm going to give up my returns. It's just simply not yeah, true. Yeah, you can be conservative stuff and just reinvest interest and dividends and engineer growth. Um, but you know, it's right. interesting because everybody, if you think about it, wants the same thing with their money. They want maximum return with minimum risk. But something you said a moment ago makes sense. It's kind of like maximum return for what purpose is the question that you have to ask people that I think sometimes makes that light bulb go off, correct? It, it does. Um, oftentimes I'm asking clients and folks that come into my office, hey, what is the purpose of this money? And because, you know, really investing is, is you want to tell those dollars what you want them to do for you. And, uh, but oftentimes people are just trying to chase chase gains, chase growth, like we just talked about. And if they're chasing growth to try to get huge returns, well, they're more performance-based investing. And investing performance-based can be a very, very slippery slope. So if we understand, hey, what the purpose of this money is, then we can engineer a portfolio that's more geared towards that. And in my experience, that means a portfolio that's more geared towards interest and dividends rather than performance and growth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got to go back to the last segment of the show, if I can. You know, we talked about advisors. And I think that's one of the reasons why having an advisor is so helpful for most. Because having an advisor can get you to think logically and say, wait a minute, you're just stuck in this growth mode. But if you really want a max, maximum return with minimum risk for income, then should you really still be investing that way? That's, that's one of the reasons why. And there are, of course, a whole bunch of reasons why people as you said, about the time at the beginning of those transition years, 10 or so years out of retirement, having an advisor helps most. But let's face it, as I said, there are people watching your show that maybe don't need an advisor even at that stage. How does one tell if he or she does or does not need to bring on a financial advisor in those transition years? You can a lot of times tell. There are some people that are very strong mathematically and really love investing, um, meaning that they love getting involved with it. They treat it like a hobby and almost a, a full-time job when investing their dollars. A lot of those folks are constantly looking at their portfolio, constantly analyzing it, doing a lot of research and spending the time needed to do it 
and have some of the talents to be able to do that. But for, for most people, that, that's just not the case. Most people want to retire and make sure that they, they're working with an advisor that's qualified but also educated and, and communicate with them how to invest their portfolio for the purpose of this money so they can turn around and go really enjoy the things they want to do and not have to concentrate so much on staring at their portfolio all the time and analyzing it because it takes a lot of hours. But yeah, Dave, and, and thank you for joining us today. And I want to say I'm Wes Wood, the income guy. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about anything we've covered on today's show, please reach out to me at retiretv.com or by calling 615-826-5749. Hey, we'll see you again next week. Hi, I'm Wesley Wood, host of the Retirement Income Show, and I'm founder and president of Wood Financial Group. And we're a local independent financial services company that specializes in creating custom retirement solutions tailored to meet your particular needs. Visit retiretv.com to learn how we can help you create a customized retirement portfolio. Retirement accounts like 401ks and IRAs are great tools to save for retirement. They offer tax advantages to help keep more money in your pocket. But withdrawing money from your accounts can have a huge impact on your tax liability. Take money from the right account at the right time and you could minimize it. But taking money from the wrong account at the wrong time could result in a big tax burden. If you're not sure what you should do with your 401k in retirement, visit retiretv.com to schedule a free, no obligation conversation with Wes Wood and Wood Financial Group.